Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is Are they gone? a vlog. This is the first vlog that I'm doing after the first time I've played after that bad nine holes that I played that uh, a lot of you guys saw. It's, it had a lot of views. And it had like over 300 comments and a lot of views. So uh, I'm going through this swing change. So this is 10 holes that I had time to play 10 holes. I This day, which was today, Fridays are like my golf days. So this day I was really, uh, I was working on my swing for about two and a half hours or so. Chipping and uh, and then mostly full swing. About, I would say about 30%, no, but 20% chipping and mostly full swing. So then I actually saw that I had time to, to go to the course. So I went out. So this is the first hole, which is like 300 and... 70 yards. That's my monster hybrid. Hit a uh, solid shot and it bounced. It got a good bounce because uh, it was up the right hand side and stayed in the fairway. So that was good. And it was solid. All right. So now here is the first swing of the day. So this is after like hitting a bunch of balls on the range and everything. And the range here, uh, the grass in, on my section of the range is really bad. So I actually felt really good about this because the, the grass is just like perfect. So this is 130 yards which with a pitching wedge. <clears throat> and that was one of my best shots of the day. I'm really working hard at getting into a good P2 position and then getting back there, like feeling like I'm repeating that position again at P6. I'll, I'll explain this more later. And then also not having any loop at the top. So here, let's just take a little slow motion here. See, there's the P2, the first parallel point. See this at the top? See how it's not getting as arms out, club head laid off? Uh, it's still doing it a little bit, but certainly not as much as it was before. And the net result of just concentrating on just getting that good P2 position is a shorter swing. And a shorter swing, and then I flush it more, so... And just I end up hitting it as far further than taking that long, more sloppy swing. There's my putt for birdie. Just misses on the high side just a little bit. And we move on. Let's go to the second hole. Yeah, 18, 18 pars would be, I'd be fine with that. I've never had a round. I've had nine hole rounds, of course, but I've never had a round without a birdie without a bogey. I've never had a round without a bogey. Our second hole is like 340 or 330. Uh, hit it. An okay shot. Thin to win. Thin to win. All right, so I have 80 yards here. This is a 60 degree wedge. This is one of my Cleveland RTX 3 wedges I just got, which uh, full swing, I really like hitting full swing shots with this. So I'm going to feel like I'm just going to go to my neck in the back swing. And good acceleration on that one. You can see that that's a little cleaner and a little shorter up at the top for me anyway. Uh, so I hit it just a little long and I thought it would spin back because the grooves really felt like it got on it, but the green was a little uh, mushy a little bit right there. So it just kind of like sank into the green and didn't really zip back like I thought because this is downhill quite a bit. Hit it on the high side, just didn't quite. I wasn't brave enough on my line. Whenever I'm on a downhill putt, I'll play it up the break quite a bit so that you don't have to hit it. You don't have to worry about hitting it too far past. So that it was a sign that I was a little scared on that putt. Okay, so this is a par three. This is 158 yards, I think. And that's an eight iron. So uh, early rotated a little bit on that one and pulled it left, but it was very solid and it faded back to the green. So I have a birdie putt from here. This is like, I think this is like 30 feet forget how many steps I counted this out as. 30 foot putt, uphill. It's going to go left to right from my point of view. There we go. Alright, par par birdie. Good start there. Pull it out of the hole. 
And that felt good, especially because, you know, I've been struggling. So it felt good to be doing, making my ball do generally what I wanted to do on the golf course. All right, so this is, I believe, yeah, this is my best drive of the day of these 10 holes. So let's, this is a par five, like 510 yards. All right, so that was an awesome drive down the middle. So let's check out what was good about this and also let you guys know what I'm working on. That's P2. So all I'm feeling is that I'm going to P2 and then at P6, I'm just trying to feel like I'm getting back to P2 again. And the feeling for me in my transition is that I'm not laying the club off at all and I'm just using my right arm to put it back on P2 and then finishing hard with my body. That's what I'm working on in a nutshell. It sounds more complicated than it is. All right, so on this one, I have 224 yards. I was going to hit a four iron, and it was okay if I was short. Then I decided to hit a hybrid. And I was thinking of swinging into first base for some reason. You see see that big loop where the club gets laid off? And when I lay the club off, like everybody's talking about shallowing the club. When I shallow the club or get that shallowing feeling, my hand goes out and the club gets more laid off and then that can end up in a shank. So I'm under the trees and I hit a, uh, an eight iron, which is 135 yards and eight iron because I had to keep it kind of low and I choked up on it and I landed at pin high and it skipped out. That was really great impact though. Man, that shank with that hybrid, that's how you shank a hybrid. It's not supposed to be possible. Good grief. That's what happens when I try to swing to the right, to first base too much. Yeah, I never like that swing to first base stuff. More like think of a, I need to think of a where, if you want to, and a, base, a baseball analogy. Instead of swinging to first base, I need to think of swinging to the second baseman, where the second baseman would be if he's anticipating turning a double play. So that's just barely right of second base. All right, so this is my 60 degree wedge. And that lie, the, gr the grain is growing into me, and it's wet. It's like kind of soggy there. You can see how much that grabbed. Before the Be Better Golf short game scoring system that I made with Tim Yelverton, and he taught me a bunch of stuff and, and really grooved that system, I would not have been able to hit that shot. My contact has just gotten so much better with my chips. Go to bebettergolf.net slash scoring. You can check out what I'm talking about. little plug there. All right, good. So that was a great up and down to save par, even though I was a par with a shank. So, but the really good players are going to take advantage of these par fives a lot more than I have been. All right, not a bad move there, but I can't tell if that was just me swinging a little bit too left or if I just hit that on the toe, but that, that was a pretty solid block. So now this is a pitching wedge. I have a little bit of lip issues here. This is like 140 yards, so I'm going to try to hit this pitching wedge really hard. But I got a little bit of lip there, so understandably I hit it kind of flat-footed. I pured it. I hit it really solid. But I, I hit it a little bit left because you can see the lip on the right of me is closer than it was on the left, so I did pull it a little bit and that was safe. So I got my 60 degree wedge and I'm really trying to pick out the spot I want to land it on the green. The wind you can see is blowing into me which makes this shot a little bit easier but again that's Kikuyu grass which is very grabby and difficult but my my chipping motion is so much better. So this I, I'm picking out my landing spot oh. did not really I swung, I swung into the hill rather than with the hill, and that was that kind of grabby, awkward finish to that shot. And uh, but I, I thought I hit it pretty good. It just spun like crazy. It just bit. So this is for par to stay one under. And no, it's now I'm even par. That was kind of uh, the one thing I would like to have more time to practice is my putting. And I've thought about getting the tour links putting green from my backyard. I might do that. Uh, 
All right, great drive there. That up at the top of my swing, I'm okay with the length of my arm swing in my back swing, but it's a little bit too much fold in my wrists. It makes it look a little sloppy. I, I need to have that kind of Steve Stricker feel a little bit. All right, so this is under 100 yards. That's my 60 degree wedge. Kind of got a little out of sequence there, but I hit it perfectly pin high, just a little bit left. You can see that's about five steps, six steps left. So the guy that I was playing with outdrove me. I hit that ball hard. I hit that ball probably 290, but he outdrove me by like 30 yards. But I really wanted to make that putt because I said, I don't care if you outdrove me, I'm still going to get a better score than you on this hole. So I was uh, happy to do better than Brett there because he uh, he said, well, he's a good he's not really a very good player, but he can hit his driver like a pro. Everything else he can't really do it at all. All right, so that was a poor drive weekly out to the right in the trees. Let's see where I went. That was just that was just off the toe. Didn't really practice very many drives today. I don't think I'm going to stick with this M1. But I got 90 days, so about 80 days from now to return it. Okay, so that when was... When that out, it went sky high. I don't know if I just came down on it to straight down or what. Yeah, I did. I, I swung, again, I swung into the hill rather than with it, and I hit it right on the toe. And that was my worst iron shot of the day. A big loop up at the top that made me hit it off the toe and in the water so now I'm in trouble I'm one under at the moment but I need to get this up and down for bogey on this par 5 so this is for bogey I'll go down and make this no doubles no sevens on the card no a little on the low side so that's it that's a seven so that goes from one under to one over and now I'm going to the hardest hole it's, this is on the scorecard, the hardest hole in the course. I don't think it's the hardest hole in the course, but handicap-wise it is. And that was the same thing I did on the last tee shot, just weekly out to the right. So again, in the trees with tree trouble, which is the reason I switched to, switched to this M1 was because when I've borrowed other people's M1s, I hit it very consistently. So watch how close that comes to that metal cylinder. Great punch out with my forearm, but I almost hit that thing and I, I was nervous it was gonna rebound on me. I almost hit that, whatever that is, maintenance cap, sewer cap thing. <laughs> yeah, I almost hit that thing and I had like, my life flashed before my eyes when I thought it was gonna rebound and hit me. All right, really good, good tempo. I'm really happy with a lot of my iron shots as far as I've, without trying to change the length of my backswing, it just kind of changed my thinking about what I'm trying to do. And it's shortened it, so that's been nice. All right, that was a really good compact. That was a more professional looking short game shot. So hit that to about seven inches or six inches. Alas, it's a bogey, but um, you know, there's good things to take from that hole. That short game shot was, was nice. I probably would have tried to put that even though through di two different, actually three different lengths of grass, it would have been pretty hard to predict. So this is 200 yards, just over 200 yards. Oh, nice. Same thing with my woods, I'm just getting a little sloppy up at the top. With my irons, I'm, I'm all right, but with my woods, I'm getting a little, my wrist set is getting a little sloppy up at the top. So same kind of chip there. Not bad, it just bit a lot. And I just didn't anticipate. That was really good. Yeah, the impact was really good. I just didn't anticipate, one, how much it was going to bite, but also, two, mainly, I didn't anticipate how upslope it was with the rollout. I thought it would roll out more. So this is for par to shoot 38 on the front. Great putt. So it's starting to get my putting going a little bit. I mean, really, if I wanted to. I know... I'm just a day. I'm, I know that I'm always a day away from being a great putter because it just it's just a set of three drills I have to do, but it takes like three hours to go through them. Okay, so this is a par five, tenth hole, final hole. 
before I have to go pick up the kids. So I blocked that out to the right, but at least it was it was more solid than the last couple drives. This I have some lip problems. It's an eight iron, super solid. I just I hit that ball first and then sand, launched it real high in the air, dead straight. I was happy about that one. They just kind of read. This is one of the newest bunkers on this course. It's like I don't know, nine months old or something, and there's still quite a lot of sand in it. All right, so this is actually tied. This is also this is my best iron shot of the day. Really concentrating here on getting a good takeaway and not laying it off at all at the top. Not having that kind of loopy float load up at the top. Really trying to just change directions with no. And I did that so nicely there. I did exactly what I was trying to do. A little bit of a Nicholas step back, which shows me that was spitting a little bit more than I wanted. That's where the ball landed, and it rolled out to there. So that was really good. It looked like to me like it went over, but it didn't. So watch this change of direction. See how there's very little, there's almost no layoff. A little speedish on the, the through swing there, but I'm all right with this. All right, so this is for birdie to go one over on the round. Right in the center. Solid. All right, good. So we're making good progress on the swing. I need to actually bleed this stuff that I'm working on into my my wood swing a little bit. But uh, I'm happy with the progress. Let me know in the comments below anything you think would help me, especially uh, pre-shot routine stuff, mental stuff, things like that, and also how to bring it, drills to bring this over to my woods. Thanks for watching. I'm really going to be vlogging a lot and putting out a lot of content coming up about the swing rebuild. It's not really a rebuild. I mean, it's, it's just a uh, refining the reactionary golf swing that I'm working on. If you guys are interested, check out Building Your Reactionary Golf Swing, which is what I'm working on. And uh, the other stuff at bebettergolf.net slash premium. I'm also putting up a bunch of videos that are just really long and just for like the hardcore Be Better Golfer up at bebettergolf.net. So uh, there's basically new stuff going up on bebettergolf.net every day. So bookmark that page and check that out. And also follow me on Instagram at bb underscore golf show. Thanks for watching. Bye.